Hey there, Well Watchers! My name is Wifey Well, and today we're going to be playing Nancy Drew Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. And this is the seventh game in the series, my favorite out of the first 14 I've played, and the only 14 I've played. We're gonna jump right in. Dear Ned, remember Sally McDonald, the woman who took those photos that Dad has up in his office? Well, she just bought a house in Moon Lake, Pennsylvania. A gangster named Mickey Malone built it back in the 20s as his country getaway. We're talking major fixer-upper. Anyway, last night Sally called and she said she desperately needed my detective skills. She refused to say why over the phone. Naturally, I said I'd drive to Moon Lake immediately. But weird things started happening the moment I pulled up. First, this big tree fell down behind my car and has me totally blocked in. And then I discovered that Sally's gone. She left a note that suggested something terrible happens here at night. She's supposed to call me from her car. So here I sit, writing to you while I wait for the phone to ring. It's nighttime, and although part of me is dying to know what frightened Sally away, another part of me is starting to feel a little uneasy. I'll let you know what happens. Ever yours, Nancy. The phone's just ringing right away, huh? So yes, definitely my favorite. Spooky, I played this when I was 12. It introduced me to these games. I love it. I've probably played it through and beaten it 10 times, but it has been probably close to 10 years since I have. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's Sally. We have to talk we'll have to see what I can remember. One of your trees seems to have other plans for me. What do you mean? A tree fell down behind my car just as I was driving up to the house. I'm blocked in. Oh, the dead maple beside the driveway. Oh, they told me it was in danger of falling over when I had the place inspected. I just never got around to doing anything about it. Listen, call M's Emporium. That's a store on the lake. Emily knows everybody. She'll know who to call. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'm not in any hurry to leave. You will be. Okay, Buck. I just bought a little outboard motor. <laughs> so boat. ominous. I haven't used it yet, but the guy who put it in for me said it should run just fine. It's tied up at the dock out front. Just get in it and go. Go anywhere. Just get away from the house. Why? What on earth do you think is going to happen? Did you say dogs? Hello? We're dead. Check out squeaking mice. What is that? <laughs> I remember what this is. you've done. That was a Strix Varia. At least I think it was. Never know for sure now, will I? Man, why is his voice so loud? Holy crap. I'm sorry, but you startled me. What are you doing out here? Birds. I'm trying to look for birds. What are you doing out here? My name's Nancy Drew. Didn't you hear all those strange noises? That was me, Miss Nancy Drew, calling in birds. And doing a pretty good job of it, too, till you showed up. Where'd you come from, anyway? I drove in today from River Heights to visit my friend Sally McDonald. Now, why would you want to do a thing like that? The Malone house is no place for one young woman, let alone two. 
What do you know about the woman living here? I talked to her a couple of times, but you know, the last time I saw her, she wasn't doing so good. She acted real anxious, scared. What do you think was scaring her? The dogs. The dogs of Mickey Malone. Legend goes that when Malone was finally arrested and hauled away, his four dogs went running off into the woods and were never seen again. People were just scaring, howling like their hearts were broken every night until one by one, they all died. But every time someone tries living in the Malone house, back they come. What do the dogs do? Every night, ever since she moved in, you could hear them howl. And some nights, the dogs would appear outside the house, running around, snarling and barking and throwing themselves at the doors and windows. And then, they'd be gone to the Barry Deer Cemetery just beyond the house, you know. Then, and Malone both. The dogs would attack her house? It's like they don't want anybody but Malone living there. I guess they don't know he's dead. And so are they. Did they ever attack Sally? She never gave them the chance. After the first attack, she stopped going out at night. Just locked the doors when it got dark and sat tight until morning. Why haven't the police investigated? This is a New York City, Miss Nancy Drew. All they got around here is one officious little park ranger. And all Jeff Akers does is sit around all day trying to figure out how he can get himself transferred out of here to a bigger park. Do you live close by? I just come to Moon Lake in the spring to look for birds. Got an observation platform just up the path, kind of my base camp. And I've got a little outboard down there on the lake. Left my car at the big dock up lake. Don't really need it. Poor dad. Are those the ghost dogs? Yes, ma'am. Which is why I think it would be a good idea if I went my merry way and you got yourself back inside that house. Good luck, Miss Nancy Drew. is not good. This seriously scared me when I was 12. Jeez, that was loud. Let's go outside and pet the puppies. See, I can laugh about it now that I'm an adult. I say that as if video games don't scare me anymore. I just beat Resident Evil 7 yesterday, and I definitely still get scared at video games. See, at least I know what I need to do for the most part. I remember enough. So this should go pretty smooth. Oh, you know what? What are we gonna call this one? Uh, let's call it Rabies. All right. We're saving right now, even though we've done nothing, because. I want to show you guys something really important. Rotten floorboards. Watch your... Beautiful. So, Mickey Malone, he was a gangster. And this was his home. And I believe it was moonshine, like alcohol he got in trouble for. Nancy, I'm really, really sorry, but I just can't face another night here. I'm going to my aunt's in Philadelphia. Doors open, make yourself at home. We'll call you from my car, Sally. Please don't hate me. I hate you, alright. Alright, here's the map. 
to the cemetery. Eventually, I have this completely memorized. We'll see if we do. Uh, but there was another cabinet to check. I don't know why my friend decided to live here. Get dead tree cut down. Oh, good going. This one has a. That appear on a fresh hmm. spring tree make my birth different from the other three. When swans drift by on shimmering blue, I'm the one who plays in the summer dew. When autumn's call brings out the deer, it is I who howls on mornings clear. And when winter comes and birds take flight, look to me to sleep through the long gray night. Um, this one has a time system, kind of like, uh, I want to say number two. We will wake up in the morning. We do not want to get the rabies. Alright, I love the setting of this one, and I, I just love this one. It's nostalgic for me. This, this started the addiction. Now, Red is up here. Was that his name, Red? This Where, must be Red's yeah. observation platform. For some reason when I said it, it didn't sound right. So Red is not here yet. Mm. It's just so peaceful though, it's beautiful out here. I would totally live out somewhere like this if I could get good Wi-Fi and a security guard. <laughs> That's the main reason I don't want to live the in the country. Full of water. I need to bail out the boat. Uh well, well let me look at it. I don't want to be in the country because I worry about my safety. Looks like paw prints. <gasps> I didn't even see those. I need a bucket. Uh okay. Ow. Till I just broke my finger off. We'll go bail out this boat really quick. Oh, I gotta have some torque. That's where this famous line came from. The spark plug is missing. I gotta have some torque. I gotta, I gotta have, have some, some torque. torque. I gotta have some torque. So we need a spark plug. Can do. So here's the tree that's blocking us in. Uh, those look too rotten. What is this for? The broken floor? Don't know if we should go to the cemetery already. I feel like it's not time for that. It's still not fixed. I know, I'm a oh, we have to fix it all at once? Mm. Could have swore we could find some mice. Alright, well let's call Sally. And let her know that we were almost murdered, and it's all her fault, and we don't appreciate it. Hello? Hey, Sally, it's Nancy. Nancy, did you see them? Did you see the dog? Yes, I did, and I can understand why you left. They were pretty frightening. But if it's okay with you, I'd really like to stay and get to the bottom of whatever's going on. 
that's why you asked me here in the first place, right? Yes, but Clancy, are you sure? Positive. Consider Detective Drew officially on the case. I wish I were even half the trooper you are, Nancy. Oh, I have such high hopes for that house. All the beauty there, the wildlife, all the pictures I was going to take. It would break my heart to have to give it up. I need you to tell me everything you can about those dogs. When's the first time you saw them? Well, let's see. I heard them the very first night I was here. I heard them almost every night, howling in the distance. But I didn't actually see them until I'd been here about a week. After that, they started appearing pretty much every other night. When they appeared, did they always do the same thing? Yes, come to think of it. They always came running up to the house, barking and snarling. They'd lunge at the windows, they'd jump up on the door, they'd These attacks seem to involve a lot of choreography, which reinforces my theory that you're not being randomly attacked by a pack of wild dogs, but by dogs who've been trained by someone determined to scare you out of your house at Moon Lake. Who would want to do that? My closest neighbor lives two miles away. My property is surrounded by the state park, but it's off season, so hardly anybody is in the park. In fact, I bet I talked to a total of three people the whole four weeks I was at Moon Lake. Which three people? Let's see. The park ranger. I forget his name. Kind of a pain in the neck. Emily Griffin. She's the one who owns that store I told you about. And I ran into this bird watcher a couple of times. Had a funny name. Red Knot. I run into him too. Other than people I may have nodded hello to while getting gas or something, I swear those are the only people I've talked to at Moon Lake. What about River Heights? Can you think of anyone there who'd want you to sell your house at Moon Lake and move back to River Heights? <laughs> you mean like an angry ex-boyfriend or something? No, I sure can't. Since I'm going to be staying here a while, is there anything I should know about the place? Well, let's see. I've got the water turned off because it's well water and it needs to be tested before I can use it for anything. In fact, if you could get that Wow, she wants me to do everything, huh? motorboat is missing a spark plug. Is there one around here by any chance? I wouldn't know a spark plug if I swallowed one whole. But you need that boat, Nancy. Right now, it's your lifeline. You can't use your car, and believe me, you can't walk anywhere because all the paths around the house end in this thick, horrible brush. You've got to get it fixed. Wait a minute. The bird watcher, he's got a boat. Maybe you could borrow his spark plug or something. Go down the path that's to the right as you look out toward the lake from the house and you'll eventually see his observation platform. Try him at night. He never seems to be around during the day. Okay, will do. Who did you say I should call about getting rid of that tree? Emily Griffin. She doesn't bother answering her phone sometimes, so don't call her. Go see her. Her store's on the west side of the lake. And brace yourself, M's Emporium is something else. How well do you know her? I feel like I've known her all my life. She's so open and friendly. She likes to make it sound as if Moon Lake used to be a major hangout for criminals and degenerates, which isn't really true and irks some people around here no end. But I figure she's just trying to make a buck. How do I go about getting your water tested? Try the ranger station on the east side of the lake. I've been told you can get some kind of kit there. I'm curious. Why did you characterize the park ranger as a pain in the neck? I left part of a ham sandwich on a picnic table once. Big mistake. From the way he carried on, you'd think I just made the FBI's 10 most wanted list. I don't think he likes me. Emily says it's because I wrecked his dream of becoming Super Ranger or something when I bought the Malone house instead of the Parks Department. Me, I think he just basically has a problem relating to people unless they're asking questions or breaking the law. The wall hanging in the living room with a poem on it, and those dog carvings in that cabinet above the sofa. What can you tell me about them? Aren't they cool? They came with the place. So the clock. Apparently, Malone had them custom made when he built the house. In fact, they're all built into the house. They're still there because you can't move them. Has the clock ever worked? Not for me. Oh, but get this. One day, I was messing with the hands. You know, trying to get them to work. And all of a sudden, one of the four little doors flew open. And instead of a cuckoo, this dog popped out and barked three times. It's a doggy clock. That Malone, bad as he was, he sure loved those dogs. Talk to you later. Stay in touch. 
they won't call our friends yet because I don't, we're not stuck or anything. Well, Willie will sleep until night to talk to Red. There's always so much talking at the beginning of one of these. But how else are you supposed to set up the story? A and get a feel for the suspect. The moon's so bright, I won't need my flashlight. Well, that's convenient. I love it though when the moon's that bright in real life. Alright, Mr. Red, I need a spark plug. I wonder what he'll want from us. I know what he wants from us already. Well, it's less than it's good. Does that mean Let's you be like sassy. me to call you Mr. Red Knot? Alright then. Hello, Nancy. Now put a muffler on it, would ya? I just heard a cerulean warbler. <laughs> Did you say last <laughs> night that you have an outboard motorboat? Sure do. Only type of motorized vehicle that's allowed on Moon Lake. Heck, if it were up to me, I'd ban them too. Have everybody get around by canoe. Nothing like the threat of physical activity to keep tourists away. You're not exactly a people person, are you? I came to see birds, not people. The more people there are in a forest, the fewer birds there are. It's a fact of life. The reason I like to come here is because nobody else does. It's perfect. Not a decent grocery store, restaurant, or motel for miles. You don't happen to have any spare spark plugs lying around, do you? What's a pretty young lady like you know about spark plugs? Ugh. Nothing like an old man calling you pretty. And I think he was a boy scout. I, I'm starting to faintly remember him always telling me to be prepared when I say bye to him. Enough to know that the engine on Sally's boat is missing one. And that I'm going to be stuck here unless and until I replace it. I might be able to help you out. After all, I was a Boy Scout. Be prepared. <laughs> but I don't want to leave you unprepared. Well, just so happens I've got two spark plugs right here in my pocket. Question is, if I give you one, what do I get for it? I don't need cash, <laughs> but maybe you could take a few pictures for me. You know how to use a digital camera? As an adult, this is just rubbing me completely different than it did when I was a child. Sure. What would you like me to take pictures of? Birds, of course. There's a couple of birds I'm supposed to take pictures of for PEPSAR. That's People for the Preservation and Study of Birds. You can recognize them by their songs, which are on this tape, which you can play on my cassette player, which you're going to have to get from M's Emporium as soon as you get your boat fixed. I know I can. Here's everything you need. Boop. M's Emporium is up late on the west side. Not that I'm trying to get you out of my hair or anything, but try not to come pestering me till you're done, okay? One more thing. You smoke? Uh, only when I'm on fire. Oh, you're a spunky one, aren't you? <laughs> well, these woods may not look it, but they're tinder dry. One lit match, and the best bird habitat on the east coast will go up in smoke. So watch what you do, because if anything like that happens, I won't be looking for birds anymore. I'll be looking for you. Watch yourself out there. He's a character. Definitely my favorite character in this one. But um, he's he's rubbing me just just slightly differently than he did the first time I played. All right, we're gonna go to morning, and we're going to do. Uh, one of my favorite things, maybe even my favorite thing, like the favorite thing, out of any Nancy Drew game I've ever played. I don't think it'll let me go without my safety vest. It's so stupid. 
god, I'm so amused. Okay. So, as a child, I totally messed that up. Positive, regular, negative, positive. Uh, this one's already positive. Regular, negative, and positive. She's not making me wear my life jacket. Uh, we'll go to M's Emporium first. We're not going to explode this time. Oh boy. Uh, this person talks a lot. Hey there! Welcome to M's Emporium. I'm Emily Griffin. I'm Nancy Drew. Sally McDonald said you might be able to help me. I like helping people. Of course, I like selling them stuff even better. But keep talking. Well, Sally invited me to come out and stay with her for a while. But right now, I need a chainsaw. A chainsaw? What I really need is for someone to come out and remove the tree that fell in Sally's driveway. I'll get Tucker Davis to take care of it. Gotta warn you, though. Tucker tends to do things in his own sweet time. So how come Sally ain't with you? She thinks the Malone place is haunted. And after last night, I can see why. I told her. I said, Sally, that old house is gonna be nothing but trouble. And sure enough, Malone sounds have come back. Just when we all thought they were finally resting in peace. When was the last time they appeared? Seems like they show up every time somebody buys the place. So the last time would have been a 10, 15 years ago. Have you ever seen the dog? Nope. Don't want to, neither. Just hearing them howl is bad enough. Scares the bejeebies out of me. I got the bejeebies scared out of me twice last night. Just before I saw the dog, I caught a man named Red Knot prowling around outside the house. The bird watcher comes in every so often to stock up on that weirdo food he eats. You know how them tree hugger types are. It seemed to me that he was more into watching birds than hugging trees. Yeah, well, whatever. One thing's for sure, he's gonna wind up with a dose of buckshot in his hind end if he keeps tramping through people's yards making noises like he just popped out of a UFO. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, really, Red Knot is the only character I like in this whole game. Mr. Knott did me a favor, and in return he asked me to pick up a cassette player from you. Oh yeah, I got it right here. Thought maybe the old coot had forgotten he left it here. What else can I do you for? I need to get the water from Sally's well tested. How would I go about doing that, do you know? Just get a water testing kit from the ranger station and follow the directions. Where's the ranger station? Just up Lake from Sally's on the east side. Why would there be a problem with the water? Because it's well water. And seeing as Malone dug that well 80 years ago, what gets pumped out of it should be pretty funky. Where do you find your... <laughs> Bless you. It's all the dust. Sometimes I think it grows on this stuff. Some of those old bottles are beautiful. Where'd you get them? Found them. See, back in the days <laughs> of Prohibition, that old Found Malone them. place used to be party central. Only way to get to and from back then was by boat. And when those boats dumped, on account of bad weather or bad driving or the feds suddenly showing up, well, everything from diamond necklaces to full bottles of illegal booze sank to the bottom of the lake. So it's finders keepers, huh? That's right. See, recovering objects from the lake bed is illegal. According to squeaky wheel acres, dragging the lake for artifacts was upsetting it delicate eco balance so thanks mostly to his constant squawking the state banned it are you saying you acquired this stuff illegally well of course not it all washed up on shore sounds like you aren't real fond of ranger acres jeff acres could take all his precious rules and regulations and take a flying leap now i got nothing against getting more customers in here mind you but i kind of like moonlight the way it is small quiet out of the way but jeff acres 
Why, there's nothing he'd like better than to see all the lake and all the property around it turn into one big, noisy, jam-packed state park. Now, I'll tell you, I do remember who did this one. And right off the bat, it sounds like Jeff Akers either has the perfect motive or not a motive. You know what I mean? Why would he want that? He's the type of guy who likes to boss people around. Makes them feel because important. either he wants to scare he everyone away with the dogs, with courage, or out maybe one he thinks no one will come because of the dogs. Same with Red. He wants to keep people away. And then her, she said she likes it the way it is, but it seems like she'd like more people to come. Beautiful. Is there anything else to see? Buy a piece of the past. 80 years ago, Moon Lake was crawling with gangsters, flappers, and jazz musicians from the big city. They traveled to and from parties by boat and were so rich that if they accidentally dropped something in the lake, they wouldn't even bother going after it. Each item you see here was fished by legal means out of Moon Lake and most likely belonged to some wealthy big shot. Go go home without buying at least one genuine artifact from the Luring Twenties. And Benson Aviation Millie gets you there. Millie. Uh, I think we end up talking to Millie, don't we? I don't know, that, sound, that name sounds familiar, Millie. So I guess there is some more characters, but we only need the three. Let's go see Jeff Akers. Gosh, we're swimming. Let's go see Jeff Akers. Let's not even introduce Are ourselves. You Jeff Akers? At your service. I noticed that you arrived by boat. Does that mean you're staying on the lake? Dang it. Yes, I am. My name's Nancy Drew. I'm visiting Sally McDonald. Let's see. Sally McDonald is the woman who bought the old Malone place. That's right. Only she's gone back to Philadelphia. Malone's dogs got to her. Don't tell me she believes all that ghost dog. I saw them myself. Whatever's out there, I'm sure they're no more and no less than exactly what they look and sound like. Dogs. Living, breathing, very noisy dogs. Any idea what would make a dog's eyes glow yellow? Something in their diet, maybe? Some oddball vitamin or protein. Why do you think dogs would attack Sally's house? Dogs can be trained to do almost anything. True. Have you ever investigated the ghost dogs yourself? Do you always ask this many questions? Sorry, it's my nature. But would it be okay if I asked a few more? I'm a very busy man, Miss Drew, but... I am here to serve the public. You know, he, 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 he's making a lot of sense. Maybe he's not as bad as everyone's making him out to be. Do you have something I could use to test the well water at Sally's? Sure do. Simple to use, too. Just pump some water into this vial, return the sample to me, I'll send it off, and in a day or two, you'll find out whether or not your water's fit to drink. Okay, thank you. Does everyone out here have a well? Everyone who doesn't want to die of thirst does. Hooking up to a municipal water supply is out of the question. Too expensive. This place isn't exactly your ordinary ranger station, is it? It's also the Moon Lake Post Office, and... The unofficial Moon Lake Museum of Factual and Natural History. I've lived here all my life, so I can't help but feel obligated to protect not only the area's flora and fauna, but also its past. 
So then all three of our suspects have been around Moon Lake for a while. So you know all about Mickey Malone? As a member of the law enforcement community, I prefer to dwell on the positive aspect of history instead of on the activities of a bunch of glorified thugs. As an officer of the law, can you think of anyone who might want to scare Sally off her property? The woman who owns the shop across the lake? Emily Griffin? I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure she's been dragging the lake in front of Malone's house for artifacts, which is illegal. It would be a lot easier for her to do her dirty work if nobody was living there. Very true. You think it would be best if Malone's house was just torn down and forgotten? Not necessarily. It's hard to ignore its potential as a tourist attraction. And if that's what it takes to draw more people to Moon Lake, hmm. I'm a reasonable man. Would you mind mailing this letter for me? Not at all. Would it be okay if I looked around? Please do. And if you have any questions, any more questions, just ask. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Oh, and one last thing. The deer mouse population has boomed this year, so please take precautions if you're cleaning out any area where they may have nested. They can carry some nasty diseases. Thanks for the tip, Ranger Acres. Yeah, you're not so bad. Everyone's making you out to be a jerk, and I couldn't really remember. But I know that Red is my favorite, because he's very uh, eccentric in his own way. Well, these are supposed to be quote-unquote learning games, and I will say, I believe it's this one, I learned how to read Roman numerals, and I've retained that knowledge, and, you know, I bought, I got this game when I was 12, I was in the 6th grade, and when I went to 7th grade, um, our middle school was 7th and 8th grade, I was the only kid that could read Roman numerals, and that was very exciting for me. Man, I honestly think none of this is important. Just a bunch of rules. And I don't remember animals even coming into the game. I'm not sure why we can look for this animal stuff. Um, if you do want to read this, like I don't mean to sound like I don't care, but you could just pause the video really quickly and, and read it. Are there any pictures of Mickey Malone? Francis Bacon Grits and his wife Zelda Strawberry. Interesting. Yeah, nothing important was there. Alright, we'll just kind of read through some things. Uh, well water. Righty tidies up to Goosey, got it. So we gotta mess around with the spout. Oh, we need to pour the water bottle into it. Okay, got it. So we can go ahead and do that. Hantavirus. Deer mouse. 
so we definitely have to use those rubber clubs we got so we don't die. Uh, I'm assuming that you know, this is actually important. Damn, here's all the animals. Wow. It's like Oblivion Skies and the Elder Scrolls. Famous residents. Uh, ben Franklin. Here's the part about Mickey Malone. <clears throat> Gangster in Philadelphia got rich smuggling and distributing illegal liquor, built a house on the North Shore, the site of the old Rutsky farm. See early settlers. People came from up and down the East Coast to attend the parties he threw at Moon Lake. He was convicted of tax evasion in 1933 and sent to prison where he eventually died. I am assuming we're good. I probably shouldn't mess around with this without Ranger Acre's permission. Oh, there's the Roman numerals, I believe. You're back. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. He seems nice. He's like handsome too, so I'm not sure why everyone doesn't like him. Um, alright, let's go back to Sally's. We got lots to do. We have to go bird watching. And we have to do this. Bucket. Priming the pump. Water sample. And we're going to leave the water there because reasons I will not state. <clears throat> okay, so we got the water. Let's do the um, bird thing. I believe we have to listen to this at least once. American Goldfinch. Northern Cardinal. Red-tailed hawk. Western Tanager. Just four? All right. And I'm pretty sure Nancy will tell me when she hears something. A face only a gnome could love. See. Off. Oh, what a shock. There's got to be another way to get this open. Yeah, throw it against the wall. Hammer. A uh, weird mask. Alright. Success. Now let's go bird hunting, I guess. Should we try and go to the cemetery? We better look at the directions. You better be careful. I'm gonna write them down. Okay, so we're gonna go left, right, 
Uh, I'm trying to like right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Right? Hold on. Right? And then left, left, right, right. Okay, no, one more right. Okay. Let's see how this sound like. <clears throat> Come on, game. Left, right, right, left, left, right. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left. Uh oh, I forgot where I was on my list. Left, right, uh oh. <laughs> well, we made it anyway. <laughs> oh, I'm so useless. Snoopy. Oh my gosh, this is before Jersey Shore. Stench. Okay, now this is important in the States. Um, so, Vitus, I remember this being important. Vitus was born in February. I think that's considered winter still, right? Summer, June, yeah, I think. Winter. Xander is summer. Oops. These look like dog tracks. Yeah, they do, but Nancy, I'm trying to do something. Iggy. Oh. Is Iggy winter? No, spring and Iggy must be fall. Iggy is fall. Lucy is spring. This will be important later. Dog tracks. And I know we saw a birdo. I must have scared it. How? Damn it, Nancy, how'd you scare it? <sighs> She's killing me, I swear. Did I do something wrong? How do you be sneaky? I heard a bird. Basically, we're just going to run aimlessly around trying to get photos of these birds. <laughs> Missed it. No. Maybe some of them we can't do right now for whatever reason.
Uh oh. Well, that's okay. We just gotta go backwards, right? Uh, okay. So we just do the opposite left. Okay, no, this is not working. Where's the blue jay? Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. I totally just tried to throw a piece of wood at it. Darn, it flew away. Well, we did throw wood at it, okay? Eventually, we'll learn this. And I won't have to do the left, 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 right, left. No more birds? Uh oh. I'm actually going way back into it too much. I think this is the way out. Alright, let's go talk to. Actually, let's go turn in our water sample. Because he said it'll take a few days. And then we'll, you know, maybe sleep and. Talk to Red and say, "Hey, the birds hate me." You're back. What do you know about the cemetery behind the Malone house? People are buried there. Beyond that, what's to know? Are Malone's dogs buried there? That's the rumor. The inscription on one of the tombstones reads Waldo Matthias. Does that name ring any bells? Not in my steeple. I have that water sample. What do I do with it? Just give it to me, and I'll take care of it. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. I think Waldo Matthias Matthias was in this. So I thought. Then think then. Well no, it wouldn't have been there, right? I thought I saw the name somewhere. Maybe it was this guy? Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's not super important yet, right? We'll get there when we get there. I think we have all these now, right? Look, and this magically fixes it. Alright. Uh, I think their birth dates had something to do with this. Okay. So, winter. It's either going to be, I think it's going to be birds. We'll write birds slash night. Summer, Xander, is going to be swans. Iggy, fall, is going to be deer. And that means Lucy is tree. Now, as you notice, the wallpaper has birds, swans, deer.
it's a directional thing, but I can't. trying to remember how you figure out the directions. I thought it had something to do with the wallpaper, but... Trees over there. Is this side just deer? That's birds. Well, there's swans and stuff too. I don't know. I guess I'm just crazy. What is this? I've been meaning to look at this. Oh, it's like notepads and stuff. Wait, is that a things to do? Looks like the stuff that we need to do is more towards the top now. Alright, 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 alright. Let's sleep and talk to Ren. So now we're out here at night and we're just going to not die by the dogs, hopefully. Did you find all the birds? I found some birds, but no matter how quiet I am, I've been scaring other birds away before I can take their picture. What am I doing wrong? You're wearing those clothes. That's what you're doing wrong. You need to blend in, like me. Go back over to M's tacky tourist trap and get yourself some camouflage gear. Only sensible thing that money grubber carries. See you in a while. Shh, down a notch. Remember. All right. And I believe it's closed at night. Do, 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 do. That's fine, we'll worry about the birds right now. We're not even close to having to worry about the the clock. Howdy, Nancy. These so-called ghost dogs left very real paw prints. I saw some near the cemetery that's by the Malone house. Have you ever been there? <laughs> Can't say as I have. Poking around cemeteries ain't exactly a hobby with me. Does the name Waldo Mathias mean anything to you? Hmm. Can't say as it does. Didn't you just call her helpful and your little pinky Michigan? I need to buy something. You want it? I got it. As long as you pay cash, that is. That's just it. I'm running kind of low on cash. Would it be possible to start a line of credit? My daddy always said, neither a borrower nor a lender be. But I'll tell you what, seeing as how you're a friend of Sally's, seeing as how I got some things around here that could use doing, Yes, we could work something out. What is it you need? A new house. How much work do I gotta do for that? To make a long story short, I need some camouflage gear. Got some right over here. One size fits all. But I'm running kind of low on bait. So if you go out and get me, oh, say a dozen little critters, I'll give you the camos. A dozen little wow. critters? Worms, spiders, beetles, grubs. Anything that wriggles on its belly will do. Just look under stuff. Rocks, logs, dead leaves. Should be able to find 12 in no time. Hunting for critters isn't illegal, is it? 
things ain't quite that bad around here. At least not yet. Now, if Jess Aker's daddy was still around, you might get arrested for cruelty to animals or some such nonsense. Joe Akers used to be the deputy sheriff. Real critter lover, that one was. Joe Akers is Jess' father? That's right. Guess I'll see you later. I guess you will. <laughs> I gotta say, is it camouflage gear expensive? Isn't it like you know, a hundred bucks or something. I just have to go out and grab like 12 worms. That seems very, very fair. Well, as in kind. Have you gotten the results back from that water sample I left with you? I meant to call the Department of Health today for a status report, but frankly, I've been way too busy. Sounds like Moon Lake could use two rangers. If I were in charge of just 10 more acres of parkland, they'd give me an assistant. And I could devote more time to the acquisition of more land and eventually put Moon Lake on the map as one of the biggest, most popular parks in the state. Why didn't the Parks Department buy the Malone property instead of Sally? She outbid them, you cheapskate. Well, if those dogs scare Sally away for good, other people are bound to think twice about buying the place. The bank will lower its price and you'll have your land. You're insinuating things again, Miss Drew. I'm sorry, I really am. It's just that Sally's my friend, and I'd really like to find out why someone's doing this to her. I'll tell you what. If you're serious about making amends, there's some boxes by the computer labeled with dates. They're from the estate of a local history buff. She kept everything from newspaper clippings to old photos to recipes for apple crisp. She put everything in envelopes, then numbered them by year using Roman numerals. Just put the envelopes in order by year with the earliest date in front. Oh, and if you're rusty on Roman numerals, there's an entry on them in the computer. I hope I don't get distracted. <laughs> Apple crisp sounds good right now. now. Don't go reading anything until you're through, or take my word for it, you'll never get finished. I've been trying to take pictures of birds for this guy named Red Knot. Ever met him? Oh yes, the bird man. I'd stay away from him if I were you. Why? Is something wrong with him? He's a fanatic. He's got it in his head that Moon Lake would be the best bird-watching venue in the world except for one thing. Too many people. Believe me, if there was a way to get this park shut down and all the homes on the lake torn down, he'd do it in an instant. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Puppy! You're back. I noticed you have a dog. <laughs> That's Yogi. Who never goes out unless he's on a leash. Park rules. Do you have any other dogs? I hope you're not suggesting I train Yogi to run around in the middle of the night barking <laughs> in a passing houses. Thanks, man. We're just help. accusing That's him of everything today. Poor guy. All right. Roman numerals. I totally got this. Let's see. Jeff said the envelope with the earliest date goes down in the front. 1900. 1910. 1908. 1904, 1911, that one's done. 13, 14, 60. 1917, 1919, this one's messed up. Uh. All right, what are we, 19, and this is 1997, all right, I'm trying to find the next smallest, okay, I guess, so M is a thousand, C is a hundred, B is 5, I is 1, L is 50, X is 10, so um, 13, 14, 60, 17, 19, flowers, 30, 32, 39, 40, 45, 41, 
I don't see which one's supposed to go here. And that has me really concerned. Oh. Wow. 13, 14, 15, 17, 19. For some reason, I was just totally blind on that one. 19, 6. Any that don't belong here, we should just switch. Now that all oh. Sorted, I can do some reading. Okay. <laughs> well, the, if you only need to move, then. All right, let's do some reading. What year is this from? No, I guess we'll find out when we close up. Okay, Philadelphia mobster dies in Leavenworth. This is about Mickey Malone, with a failure, age of 52. Uh, Malone O, Philadelphia Duds and Suds, laundromats, dry cleaners. Um, but he was really a racketeer, a gangster. Um, low profile, four large dogs. Um, he was convicted, eight years. Oh, he died just two months before he was scheduled to be released. Too bad, buddy. And that was then 1941. 1932. Wingster now didn't like residents. Uh, his attack dogs. In pajamas. There he is, right here, Mickey Malone. Um, oh, he punched a press person because he didn't want to see, be seen in his PJs. What a baby. There's nothing to read before then, right? 1925 Gangster Moon Lake's newest resident We're reading these totally but hey there's the name Waldo Matthias um, We might need to actually read this What else is here? The agent spearheading the Department of Justice's investigation Okay So now we know who Waldo Matthias is Let's read the rest of these in order Hmm 1997 There's gold in them there sandbars Alright, let's read this This is from 1997 And it's about this gal So uh, Dragging ban is a drag For Pennsylvania treasure hunter at least that's been the experience of Emily Griffin, owner of M's Emporium on Moon Lake in central Pennsylvania. For the past 10 years, she has been dragging a heavy net back and forth along the bottom of the lake, uncovering and bringing to the surface relics from the 1920s. I've dredged up everything from diamond tiaras to skeleton keys to full bottles of French cognac, said Griffin. It just blows my mind what those people would drop back then and never bother going back for. She was referring to the wealthy guest of gangster Mickey Malone, who built a home on the lake in 1925 and threw large, I don't know how to say that word, crazy <laughs> parties almost every weekend. Because his guests would travel to and from the house by boat, personal items were lost overboard with great frequency. <coughs> Miss Griffin estimates that she has made close to $20,000 selling her finds to antique hunters and tourists. But last week, her windfall came to an end. The county in which Moon Lake is located passed an ordinance making the recovery of objects from the lakebed illegal. The ban arose from the fact that the bottom of Moon Lake is composed of unusually fine sand. 
When disturbed, it clouds the water, sometimes for days, posing a threat to the aquatic plants and fish that are otherwise thrive there. Park Ranger Jeff Raker Akers, who oversees the state park surrounding the lake, initiated the ban. The equal balance of Moon Lake is simply too delicate to ignore, he contends. But Miss Griffin begs to differ. The whole thing's just plum ridiculous, she says. You know what all that stuff down there is doing right now? It's rusting, rotting away, polluting the water. <coughs> Excuse me. I had like a little <clears throat> frog in my throat this whole time I've been reading. Heck, by getting it out of there, I'm doing the county a favor. Unfortunately, the county doesn't see it that way, and it appears that Miss Griffin will have to abandon what has become a pleasantly profitable hobby. Oh, I don't know, she shrugs. I can still sell the stuff that washes up on shore. And that happens, you know, especially after a good storm. So I may be down, she says, eyes twinkling, but I ain't necessarily out. <clears throat> Why is my throat just deciding to die? Well, let me take a sip really quick, you guys. <clears throat> That's a little better. Oh, here's some more stuff to read. I missed this last time. I think this is mostly just warning, uh... Oh, I don't know. Maybe that is important. Might just be the learning stuff, but this is the deer mouse that we have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of diseases, things that are gonna kill us. <clears throat> You're back. I finished putting all those envelopes in order. Excellent. Thank you, Miss Drew. And to show my gratitude. I've got something for you. Chances are it isn't a paycheck. No, it's an honorary junior park ranger pin. I keep them on hand so I can give them out to children whom I see demonstrating respect for park rules and regulations. A little bit of positive reinforcement. Okay, but if a man gave me this in real life, I would love him forever. It's so cute. Unfortunately, I don't get to give them out that often. Oh, gee, thanks, Ranger Acres. Thanks for all your help. Always a pleasure. No, really, that is so sweet. Just to be recognized for the small things, you know what I mean? I think I'm crushing on Ranger Acres, you guys. Uh, I guess we need to go get the bugs. I don't really want to go looking for bugs. What if we see spiders? I had to kill a spider today while I was driving. And it was, like, at the top of my driver window. And, oh, it was really hard to kill it, not freak out, not wreck and die. Is this a book? No. We don't need to look under that. Now when you hear the buggies, that's how you know. Get him, get him, get him. I got us a worm. Ooh, two worms. Here, birdie, birdie, birdie. Hey, Nancy. Come on now, don't be dumb. Now let's just run around here. Because... Obviously, this is where we're going to get all the rest of the bugs. I say that as if you guys have played it before. Ooh, that's a big one. That looks like an Animal Crossing bug. One of those beetles that are on the trees. Worm. Pretty bird that I hear. No birds here. No, but what's up with this rock? I'm guessing it's a marker for if you get lost. Red bird, yellow bird, fallen tree, log, blue bird, log, trees. I don't see rock on the map. Can it? 
yes, a chirping one. Hey, we got this bird. Nancy always takes it like one second too late, but then it's a perfect picture here. Worm? Nope. Um. Where are all the birds? A shoe. Alright, I'm getting worried we're just going the exact same ways over and over. Oh yes, we definitely are. What if we're at a log? Uh oh, I don't know which log we're at though is the problem. Not this one, we must be here. That means we need to turn around. And then when we get here... We need to go this one. Alright. And now I think we're here. Heading towards the cemetery. Pollen tree. We'll go ahead and go straight. See if there's any fox. Maybe get a bird. And this one that always flies. Dang it. Okay, no point in going down past the stick. So now we're at this log. Um, there is a dead end. Ooh, a little pretty blue bird. Go the dead end way, look for bugs, nothing. Go right. Where are all these damn bugs? Man. And this is the cemetery. Where are all the bugs? You know what? Maybe it's gotten too late in the day. I think that's the issue, honestly. Because all of a sudden we just quit finding bugs. So let's go... Well, I mean, do you find bugs in the morning or at night? We could go out there at night, but... Maybe we find some bugs during the day and some at night, I don't know. Not hearing anything at all. Alright, let's just go back. Oh. It's a good thing that glowworm magically chirped right when it did. So I was like, oh, no bugs, I guess. Should I just be checking? No, it'll just chirp then, right?
feel like oh, that's not terrifying. I feel like I'm starting to sort of kind of learn my way around. That's creepy. Definitely a little disturbing. Guys, I don't like it. This 12? Eleven. Oh, you're killing the game. I really don't like this with the, uh, the dogs and stuff. Like, actually, let's just not play this anymore. You know what we need to do? We need to save. We haven't saved in, since the freaking putting the boat together. My game crashed. You know how mad I'd be? I hear a bug. Where am I hearing it? I don't see it, but I heard it. There's going to wing it. Now I can't get it to sound off. I hear like some noises. I don't know. And we conveniently got it right at the exit. Alright. Morning time. Glad we went out there now at night. We haven't called our friends at all. I'm telling you, I'm a pro at this one. I gotta quit popping my fingers. I always pop my fingers when I play this game. Alright, we got your dumb bugs. Ah, uh, screw you. Any word from Tucker, what's his name? He hasn't been by to move that tree yet. I'll give him another call. But like I said, the man marches to the beat of another drummer. A very slow drummer. Guess I'll see you later. Always a pleasure. Don't I have 12 bugs? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hey, Nancy. How's the bait finding coming along? 12 big, fat, juicy ones. Just like you wanted. Well, now. You done all right for a city gal. Here you go. Hope whatever you're hiding from won't catch you. <laughs> How you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. Keep on trucking. Bye, weirdo. I mean, I don't like her as a person, but giving me that gear for 12 bugs was incredibly kind. Yogi's gone. You're back. Where's Yogi? In the run, out back. Even out of sight, he's under my full control, as park rules require. 
Sorry to bother you again, but did those results from the water test come in yet? There's something here for you from the State Department of Health. Okay. Do not drink or use the water from your well. Oh my gosh. Not Arsenic. Only is the water bad, but it seems like the well may have been contaminated deliberately. I wouldn't go jumping to conclusions without proof, Miss Yu. I'm sure there's a far less melodramatic explanation. Thanks for all your help. Not a problem. Uh, arsenic will definitely kill ya. That's a good thing. Sally had enough common sense not to drink it. Jeez. Alright, now we gotta go get the last of the birds. I'm not even sure at this point what birds we're missing. So we're gonna run around. Hold on, better make sure we didn't miss one. Yeah. Oh. Wait, I think I forgot to go away this way. I think I forgot to go. See, now I don't know. Now we can check this hospital map. So yeah, I don't see it. leading back dang it it is it's leading back to the beginning uh nope and where's the warbler bird or whatever it was called yeah the tanger tan tanager Alright you guys, now we actually have all of the birds that we can get out of the forest. And I think we have to talk to Red and tell him that we cannot find the last bird. Come on, jeez. <laughs> I thought this was like initials for a second. How's the bird watching coming along? I just can't seem to find a red-tailed hawk. Any suggestions? Well, there's got to be lots around here. You haven't been going around wearing sunglasses and earmuffs, have you? No, Red, I haven't. Well, according to my bird map, they like to nest in the big tree that's just to the southwest of the Malone House. I suggest you park yourself nearby and wait. Found to spot one sooner or later. See you in a while. Watch yourself out there. Oh, 
right. This is the tree. Well, I don't see any hawks, but this is probably the tree Red was talking about. At least it was the tree. That sounded like a hawk. See the hawk? There it is. I better get a picture before it takes off. Speaker. Hey, what is that hawk standing on? Oh, that looks like a speaker. Uh. Huh? I better get out of here. My arms and legs are tied. I can't move. At least I can kick. If I could just get that scythe down, I could use the blade to cut the rope around my wrists and free my hands. Alright. Gotta try and remember this puzzle. loud. Sorry, guys. I can't just let this thing burn up. I've got to put it out. What in blazes happened? I saw the fire from my platform and came running. You weren't in there playing with matches, were you? You're so loud. I was looking at birds, and then I noticed something on the house, and the next thing I knew I was locked in the tool shed and somebody was setting it on fire. Whoa, you're not making much sense. Probably smoke inhalation or something. Come talk to me after you've cleaned yourself up and gotten some sleep. I need to tell you something. Somebody tried to kill you? I didn't say that. I guess it's just hard for me to believe that anybody would consider me to be that big a threat. I should have never let you stay there by yourself. Sally, I'm fine. I feel bad about your tool shed, though. Who cares about the shed? It was full of junk anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That's kind of the way Ranger Akers saw it, too. He showed up right after the bird watcher did and ticketed me for burning refuse in a manner that endangered park property. Ah, uh, that man is insufferable. Emily was nice, though. She came by right afterwards and wouldn't leave until I drank the tea she made for me. Look, Nancy, one more time. If you want to leave, just say the word and I'll come get you. Sally, one more time. I'm fine. Well, then promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise. I'll be in touch. You better. Alright, since we're already on the phone, why don't we go ahead and just get some of this phone stuff out of the way? Some of these games you do need to have certain conversations on the phone with people in order to progress the game Hello? hey sally it's nancy nancy hi how's it going i'm afraid i have some bad news i had your well water tested and according to the health department it contains a very high level of arsenic arsenic somebody poisoned my well the health department can't say for sure yet but if that is the case do you have any idea who would do a thing like that no, and it doesn't matter. I love that house, and I am going to live in it. If that well's bad, I'll just dig another one. At least, I will when I know for sure why bad things keep happening there. You are going to figure that out, right, Nancy? You bet I am. <sighs> I knew I could count on you. Where'd all that stuff in your tool shed come from? It's just junk left behind by previous owners. Same with the house. I've been meaning to take inventory and start fixing stuff, but I didn't. If they ever make procrastination a crime, I'm done for. Are you aware that you're the proud owner of your very own cemetery? Yeah. When the realtor told me there was a cemetery on the property, I went, ugh. But when I saw how far from the house it was and how small it was, I decided I could live with it, as it were. So you didn't go out there much? Uh, no. 
Talk to you later. Stay in touch. Alright, let's call our friends and let them know that we've been murdered by the shed fire. I wasn't expecting to actually do the shed puzzle correctly the very first time. I believe the death scene is literally just, it shows the shed on fire on the outside and that's it. Gosh, there's a lot to say. Moon Lake is gorgeous, but it's so remote. The park ranger is the closest thing they have to a sheriff around here. Park ranger? What's he like? Which, as we all know, is Bess's way of saying, park ranger? Is he cute? Not true, George. Nancy thinks everybody's cute, so what will be the point? Anyway, Nancy, you were saying? His name's Jeff Akers. He's very helpful, polite, efficient, knowledgeable. Sounds boring. In fact, he probably knows more about the area than all the other residents of Moon Lake combined. Sounds very boring. What's he know about these alleged ghost dogs? He thinks they're just plain old dogs that for some reason like to run around at night scaring people. And what does Detective Drew think about the dogs? I think Sally had good reason to be scared of them. I don't blame her for leaving, which leads me to think that maybe that was the whole idea. Somebody had those dogs attack Sally in order to scare her away? Why would anybody do that? She was there for less than a month. You'd have to be a total creep to make enemies that fast. And Sally's one of the nicest people I know. Ooh, Nancy. Speaking of cute guys, Frank and Joe Hardy called. I filled them in on where you are and what you're doing, and they're dying to hear from you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what are they up to? Compared to you, nothing. As I was telling them about this latest case of yours, I could hear them turning green with envy right through the receiver. Their number is 280-555-4865. Beth didn't recognize it when they called and almost didn't answer the phone. Good thing my cousin here has a memory like an elephant, huh? What's that supposed to mean? Call them, Nancy. They're dying to hear from you. But remember, Frank's cute and all that, but George and I want to hear from you, too. Yeah, no fair discussing the case with them from now on and not with us. Promise you'll keep us up to speed? <laughs> I promise. Well, I'm trying to do that right now. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Believe it or not, on some nights, this house gets attacked by a pack of dogs. Sally's so scared of them, she left me here by myself. Did you say dogs? She couldn't have George. Dogs don't attack houses. You guys were just talking about the ghost dogs a minute ago, you sure? Not only did these dogs attack Sally's house, they had eyes that glowed yellow. A bird watcher I ran into said they were ghosts. Ghosts? The man who built Sally's place on Moon Lake was a gangster. The bird watcher said that the ghosts of his dogs show up every time someone new tries to live here. The place is haunted by ghost dogs? Like there's such a thing as ghosts. But it does sound like you've got another mystery on your hands, Detective Drew. There's a private cemetery in the woods out back. Malone and his dogs are supposedly buried there. There were paw prints in the cemetery. Fresh paw prints. Are you sure you're going to be all right there by yourself? We volunteer to drive out there and keep you company, but unfortunately my car's in the shop, and you know what a scaredy cat George is. That's okay. There's really no room, and believe me, living conditions here are pretty primitive. Scaredy cat, huh? You're gonna pay for that remark, dear cousin. This bird watcher I met has got me taking pictures of birds for some survey he's doing. He's a bit of a grump. You live nearby? No, he just kind of hangs out in the woods. In fact, I only see him at night. Interesting. He's in the woods at night. The dogs are in the woods at night. Could he have had a reason for wanting to get out of the house? Maybe. From what Ranger Acres told me, Red would like everybody around here out of their houses. He thinks there's too many people at Moon Lake, and it's ruining the bird watching. Ranger Acres called him a fanatic. Fanatic equals suspect in my book. Get this. It turns out that Jeff Akers will be one happy park ranger if Sally sells her Moon Lake property back to the bank, and they wind up selling it to the parks department. You think he might be responsible for all this ghost dog stuff? He has a motive and he has a dog, although it doesn't look at all like the dogs that have been scaring Sally. But it shows he knows something about dogs. Better pull out your suspect list and pencil him in, man. I'd still say you guys should lighten up on him. 
you two would get a kick out of the woman who owns this little store on Moon Lake. How so? She's a real country gal. We got this deal worked out where if I need something she carries, she'll let me do little chores to pay for it. What kind of little chores? Oh, like collecting bugs and worms so she can sell them to fishermen as bait. Sounds delightful. <laughs> Unfortunately, she may not be as harmless as she seems. Why do you say that? She also sells antiques from the 1920s that she finds in Moon Lake. Is that bad? If she's been getting them by dragging the lake in front of Sally's house, it is. That's illegal. You know what that means? It means Emily Griffin has made my suspect list. Because if she is breaking the law, she'd want the Malone house to stay empty so she can keep dragging the lake without anybody seeing her. Did I mention that all the water in Sally's house comes from a well? Ew, really? Does it taste like rotten eggs? Not all well water tastes like rotten eggs, Beth. I don't know if it does or not. Because the well is so old, I need to get the water tested before I drink it. Good plan. Nothing will wreck your day faster than a nice tall glass of contaminated water. Man, we really should have talked to them earlier because we've already tested it. I think somebody may have deliberately put poison down Sally's well. Yikes! What makes you think that? The Department of Health found unusually high levels of arsenic in the water sample I sent them. Somebody's trying to poison you with arsenic? They said that? It's apparently not unusual to find some arsenic in well water. So somebody could be trying to poison you, but you don't know for sure. Right. And they may not be trying to poison anybody. They may want to contaminate the well just enough to force Sally to either go to the expense of digging a new one, or forget the whole thing and leave. And because arsenic mixed on naturally in well water anyway, you may never know for sure. Bummer. Bye, you guys. Don't be a stranger. Take care. Alright, we definitely do not need a hint yet. Now let's call the boys. Hello? Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? How's it going? Uh, no, wait. Don't answer that. Talk about the weather or something. The weather? Yeah. That'll give me time to grab the other phone and take it outside. Frank's washing the car. He'll kill me if he misses anything. And here, wait a sec. Take a break. It's Nancy. Hang on. He's putting the hose down. He's drying his hands. He's walking over. Nancy, hi. What's up? Beth and George say you've got another mystery on your hands. Or should we say, on your paws. They told you about the dogs? We made them tell us everything. Pumped them dry. As you may have guessed, we're not exactly rolling in detective work here. So you're living vicariously through me. It's not the first time, sad to say. What conclusions have you reached so far, detective? If nothing else, those ghost dogs are very well trained. I'm watching to see who owns and or trains dogs around here. Good plan. But don't forget, a really smart perpetrator is going to make it look like he or she has no connection to dogs whatsoever. But then a really, really smart perp might have dogs all over the place and not bother to hide it. Because he or she would figure you'd never suspect anyone so obvious. That bird watcher doesn't have a dog. And when I met him for the first time, he seemed awfully eager to make sure I knew the story about Malone and his dog. Sounds like a suspect to me. Beth said something about a good-looking park ranger? Ranger Acres has a motive and a dog. And a uniform. <laughs> which is why Beth assumes he's good-looking. I'm sure my brother here would say a uniform automatically makes somebody more suspicious. Because most people assume that a uniform makes the wearer less suspicious. Right, Joe? Right. Mm. Of course, then again, your really, really smart perp is going to Joe. We get the picture. I'm convinced that someone is using those ghost dogs to scare Sally into abandoning Malone's house. If I can just figure out why, I might be able to figure out who. Never hurts to look for motive. Malone and his four dogs are supposedly buried in a little cemetery near the house. They've all got headstones inscribed with when they were born and when they died. That's interesting. Did Malone have family? Not that I'm aware of. Then who had the tombstones inscribed? I don't know, but it had to be someone who had access to Malone's house and property after he died. Sounds like this latest puzzle of yours is still missing a few pieces. 
I seem to be getting nowhere fast. Anybody Oops. have any suggestions? I didn't mean to click that. We can probably come up with a few, but we're not going to make it easy for you. After all, it's your case, not ours. Be sure to notice what shows up behind each dog in the clock after you turn one of the dogs in the cabinet. Psychologists call it feedback. The trick is to turn each dog in the right direction. But until you figure out what the right direction for each dog is, I guess you will have pretty much hit the wall. Later, guys. We'll be waiting. I didn't mean to do that. But at least he said something that I don't remember. I, I thought there was something to do with the walls, but... I don't know. Um... Uh... Okay, it sounds like morning time. We need to talk to Red. He said to come talk to him. We're gonna, he, he's going to say, oh, I forgot the tree burned down. Don't worry about the bird, but then I'm going to surprise him. Hello there. I owe you an apology. After you came up here looking for those red tails, I gave my map a closer look and realized it was more than 50 years old. The reason you can't find them is probably because their favorite nesting tree is gone. Finding that hawk's gonna be harder than I thought, so why don't you just give me back my camera and I'll take it from here. It didn't get burned up in that fire or anything, did it? You'll be happy to know that I did get a picture of a red-tailed hawk. And yeah, so it is kind of mean that he's just worried about his camera. Thanks, Nancy. Nice work. You're a credit to your generation. I never noticed those gas cans before. I ran out of gas. So much for being prepared, huh? Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. I'm sure you've got places to go, things to see, people to pester. See you in a while. Shh, down a notch. Remember. Alright, um... I mean, regarding the clock puzzle... I would definitely say the east and west walls, like, oh, I don't know, tree, deer, tons of birds, that's true too. Deer, birds, deer. I don't know. I see everything on the walls. But let's turn one and see what happens. Now just to figure out So that was birds and we hit Vitus. Vitus winter birds. Okay. So maybe it's just we have to get the dog Alright, so Iggy. Iggy needs to be deer. It's stuck. I need some sandpaper. Oh. It's stuck. Okay, Lucy Springs, so let's not touch Lucy. I'm thinking I kinda know this and it actually doesn't have to do with the wallpaper. I'm gonna write some general directions. Lucy faces backwards. Xander is summer. So he's either going to face forward or to the right, I believe. Swans. Let's see if we get any swans to appear. Deer. Okay, so that's not right. We need to do it the other way. At least I'm assuming that's how this puzzle is supposed to go.
Alright, Xander, we have facing to the right, and let's see if that is working. Okay. Tree, which is spring. So wait, did I mess up Lucy? I don't know what I messed up. Yeah, the third one needs to be tree. So Lucy needs to face that way. I think I was looking at... I don't know what I was doing. Lucy faces that way. Xander then... Uh, might face back? Oh. What's the order of the dogs? I'm going to put numbers. Vitus is number one. Iggy is... Two. Lucy is three. And Xander is four. Alright. Now, if we double check with our notes. Vitus, winter, birds. Good. This one is Lucy Spring Tree. Good. Swans. This is number four, Xander Summer Swans. Which means we're just waiting on moving Iggy. At least I think I've done the puzzle right. Red might have some sandpaper. He is always prepared. I think we got it, man. But it may have been in there. Howdy. See you in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess it's in the way. Oh. Guess we know what that means. sell sandpaper by any chance? I do, but Mr. Birdbrain was in last week and cleaned me out. Said he was tired of that observation platform of his giving him splinters in his denture region. I've disturbed him enough already. Would anyone else around here have some? He's your only hope, but you better ask him for it quick. That deck of his is pretty big and those squares I sold him are pretty small. Guess I'll see you later. Always a pleasure. lot of back and forth when when you have a general direction you're not just aimlessly running around and going from night to day and trying to figure out what to do next when you're like streamlining to the finish there is an awful lot of back and forth with this one isn't there and I thought I got it from him too sure I'll rob this door I don't feel like turning around anymore. Oh great, we're gonna die again. Howdy. I'm sorry to keep bugging you, but I need some sandpaper. Emily said you might have some. Here, take it and scram. I was just about to call in a metal line. That was always Ruth's favorite. Was Ruth your wife? Good heavens no. My wife had no patience for burning. Ruth was my dog. Border collie. She'd hear a metal lark, and by golly. Her ears would perk, and she'd cock her head, and she'd just come as close to smiling as ever a dog could. Do many people around here own dogs? Not really. Most people don't bother. The place is surrounded by park land, and Ranger Acres just loves enforcing the leash laws. There it 
this again. Take your sandpaper and go sand something, okay? Okay, thank you. The senpai didn't even make me do anything that time. It's stuck. Sand it. It worked. This is that weather though. Oh, I can't even look at it now. I want to say it was Iggy. The Iggy faces forward and Xander faces back, I want to say. As you can see, we've opened up some sort of secret. But unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this episode. So, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. I appreciate you being a well watcher, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!